Hey guys. Oh, Shadow Plague. <clears throat> Alright, so what kind of disease would British Rail be? Would it be a bacteria or a virus or a fungus? A Norax worm? A parasite? Prion? Necroa, which is a zombie virus? Nanovirus? A bioweapon? Simian flu or the Shadow Plague. Hmm. Tempted to go basic with it. Bacteria, because it keeps popping up out of nowhere? Yeah, that's fair. Bioweapon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, virus is, har is harder to deal with. A virus... A rapidly mutating pathogen which is extremely hard to control. That actually sounds like British Rail, um, to be honest. Uh, let's insert some genes. More DNA. Bonus DNA at the beginning. More DNA from popping oranges. You mean retiring steam locomotives. Uh... <laughs> DNA when devolving, yeah, that's fair. Alright, uh, we'll just do normal for now. <coughs> British Rail. Welcome to Plague Inc. Okay. Now we have to pick our starting location, which I think that's very obvious. I don't know where else we could possibly start, but right here. British Rail was founded. British Rail has infected its first human. Weak, but used to cold temperatures. It must evolve, using DNA points to infect more people. British Rail is a virus. This means it randomly mutates rapidly and can be hard to control. It costs DNA points to devolve. It's infected with the T-Virus! It's infected with the British Rail virus, Kane. Also, hi! I decided to play to, to play Plague Inc., but uh, my disease is called British Rail because uh -huh. I'm funny. So let's see. British Rail would cause nausea, rash, anemia, cysts, or insomnia first. Need some Pepto Bismol. Need some. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with insomnia first because it sure keeps me up at night. <laughs> How are you? How was your trip? It went fine. I got uh, I got a free copy of Dragon Quest VIII for PS2, so that's something cool to add to my video game collection. That's cool. Indeed. I think they updated the visual in this game. This looks way better than I remember it looking. Amateur... Maybe you just didn't turn up the settings. Maybe. Amateur brain surgeon amazed by demand. Ex-politician Mike Grove says the pa that patients want amateur brain surgeons because they have had enough of experts. Separately, Grove declined to share his safety record. <laughs> hey, wait, is that, is that an Onion article or is that in the game? It's in the game. There's a lot of stuff like that in the game. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like 
It sounds like an Onion article, or worse, a real article in I today's I know, morning. right? Let's see, uh... Pathogen evolves to become more unstable, that seems reasonable. Next, next step, it British Rail causes nausea. Just so much nausea. British Rail is mutated to develop the rash system without using rash system without using DNA points. British Rail will cause rashes on occasion. It sounds like something it'll do. I mean, are we talking about their decision making? Because that would make sense. It's one of those things. Medicine in UK is slowing infection. The UK is a wealthy country with high quality healthcare. To spread faster, you may need to, to evolve the drug resistance ability. Damn it, UK! How dare you have? public access to healthcare. Ridiculous! Yeah, how dare they? Holding back these innocent diseases that just want to eradicate humanity. God. <laughs> I, <laughs> I flashed back to, to a Mr. Popo line from DBZA. A cornucopia. What do you call a group of humans? An infestation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. British Rail's busy to the anemia system without using DNA points. Oh no. It's out of control. What have I created? So, let's see, would British Rail be airborne, waterborne, livestockborne, rodent-borne, insect-borne, or blood-borne? I mean, if we're gonna go with a funny joke, we could make it bloodborne because that way it's a from software joke, and that's brilliant. Or, we could go airborne, because then we can make the joke that they started making planes. <laughs> well, let's see. One person says insect, one person says rodent. <laughs> Both sound funny. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, you know, that might more sense to go water, because they did have a division of water transit service. <laughs> 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 that, was, <laughs> that was actually a thing. Uh, we're going to go with that, actually. <laughs> Did you see my video about that? They called it Sea Link. And they had another thing called Sea Speed, where they had used hovercrafts to go across the English Channel. It was very fast, but they were loud and uh, comfortable as hell. <laughs> British Rail has infected hundreds in the UK, increasing the chance that an infected person will affect a healthy person. Keep evolving your disease! <laughs> excuse you. Yeah, excuse me, holy crap. <laughs> Brit could British Rail cause paranoia? Yes, it can. I know, from a, on a deep personal level. British Rail has mutated and developed the CIS system without using DNA points. British Rail can cause a lot of things that can that aren't, that aren't very healthy, you know. <laughs> so I checked out um, a bunch of stuff announced at GamesCon, and I gotta say I'm. Not, not really impressed, personally. Not impressed? 75% of it is hyper-realistic garbage and roguelikes, and I'm just like, 
y'all need to get actual creativity for once. Don't you want to play more roguelikes? No, no, I really don't. I want to play something like with the same amount of heart as Kingdom Hearts had back in the day. And that could, because it's something that doesn't need to take itself super seriously because it had actual heart in it. No pun intended. Oh no! Um, Kane, British Rail has spread to Brazil! Oh no! And now it's Japan! I wanted to make a pun out of that and say, like, British Brazil, but I don't think that would have made much sense. Okay, it's everywhere. British Rail becoming scary. The more scary... <laughs> the more scary British Rail becomes by hurting and killing people, the harder humans will try to cure it. Remember this one involving your disease. How is it scary? It's not killing anybody. It's killing everybody. Evolve one of these things. We don't need all that stuff right now. But by, by the way, uh, I, I won't. I, I'm not gonna say what it is if you've seen it. But did you did you see the Twitter post that my brother showed me today? Yes, I did see that. Isn't that amazing. That was pretty great, actually. Makes a very solid. It's a lot of very solid points. Uh, not gonna lie. Indeed, very very excellent. The only thing announced at Gamescom that I found interesting, and now I'm forgetting what it was called. I'm gonna have to open it up. Um, it was a side-scroller Metroidvania that I'm gonna have to go grab the name of here, but it, it looked pretty sick. I really liked its art style. Just oh, no, 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 do not do that. Dude. British Rail, no, stop! <laughs> no, see, <laughs> Do not cause seizures right now. That would be very, very scary, and we don't want to freak everybody out yet. Yeah. Yeah, this game looks pretty sick. Oh, <laughs> you're so funny, Dr. Kane. <laughs> I'm just gonna put this in money train. There you go. After image. I think for once, with any game being shown in something, there's a Metroidvania game I can be excited for. I haven't been excited for a Metroidvania game ever since Dust and Elysian Tale. <laughs> and that was in 2012. British Rail has infected more people than tuberculosis. More like, more like tuberculosis. I get it. <laughs> Is that... Diagnostic in the, in the team in the UK has identified a new disease which has been named British Rail. It is quite severe and must be investigated further. Other countries are also reporting this disease. <laughs> which country found it? The UK. Oh man. If it was America. <laughs> If, if it was America, I was going to quote Senator Armstrong. No, no, no. See, this is this is great, actually. The U UK is first to instruct doctors to begin research into a cure for British Rail. Without greater funding, it is expected to take a long time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about right. Um...
Their shells mutated and developed a vomiting symptom without using DNA points. Did they release the APT? I believe that. I might play through Dustin and Listen and Tail again at some point here. UK shuts down land borders. UK doesn't have any land borders! <laughs> They're literally on an island! Oh god. I, I just flashed back, like, 15 years ago. Um... Do you, did you ever see the movie Johnny English? Yes. It's very funny. I love, I love that movie so much. And, and like, when you said that, that was the first thing that popped into my head. <laughs> because do you, do you remember his plan? Like, his, the, like, the villain's plan was, like, I will create- Oh, will yes, he- he wants- he, yes. The entire- Once I am crowned king, I will turn England into the largest prison in the entire world! Like, what? How is that a plan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It became reality. Oh, God. That movie is so good. I actually did watch one of the sequel. I think it was called Johnny English Returns. I, I didn't think it was too bad. I haven't seen any of the sequels. But like that to, It's one of those movies where I'm like, I just don't want a sequel to this. I just... I'm, I'm good. It, it really is kind of a one and done. I Like, the original... You can't beat the original. There's no way you're going to, but... I think considering what they had to work with, I think they did enough to like they, they they made it they made it fun in its own right. I think it's still an enjoyable watch. Um But yeah, it's it's not not nearly as good as the original. <laughs> you are now entering one of the most secure locations in all of England. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate timing. I have to have that movie laying around somewhere. Play the disc, buff. Play it. Play the disc. You're so hot, teasing me. Projectile vomiting symptom combo. Yes, British coughing and vomiting are causing the infected to projectile vomit, increasing the infectivity of British Rail. That's about right. Oh. Oh, I have a I have a funny story about on the way home from my trip. Spain leading got... global cure efforts. Spain has started to send research teams to infected countries, hoping to speed up development of a cure for British Rail. Go ahead, tell your story. Uh, so I get really easy motion sickness in the car, and mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just because I ate right before we left, but, uh, on the way home, uh, I threw up three times out the window. Cool. It was great. <laughs> so, that, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. The, 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 the part that makes me laugh about it is because, honest to God, I half expected to be, like, Looney Tunes, like, puking out like like a line down the road but we actually stopped at a stoplight and that's I, I threw up three times out the window and then we started moving again <laughs> plus side I felt infinitely better after hurling so did yay. you <laughs> yes didn't throw up the rest of the way home I believe I'm going to cause British rail to cause Insanity. Plus diarrhea. Hey. 
Hi! How are you, kitty cat? <laughs> Killed more than the Black Death. Another game that looked kind of interesting, but it was ruined by a skill tree once again. Damn it. Skill tree. I'm just... Like, okay, okay. I just have to say this because it's so infuriating. What is people's fetish with skill trees? Like, I'm sorry. every game... I'm sorry. I don't mean to stop. Australia begins to break down. Normal life is on in Australia is beginning to break down due to British Rail. <laughs> oh no. Paralysis sent the mutated. Excellent. Beautiful. But yeah, like, what is with every single game in the known universe needing skill trees? Like, it's it's infuriating. We don't need that. There are it's no healthy people left in the world. The last healthy person on the planet recently became infected with British Rail. Oh no. I have... I have... I can tell I'm sick. <laughs> I have a desire to... <sighs> Build trains. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I can already feel myself going down to the local Walmart. I'm gonna buy a model train. <laughs> you okay over there? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm infected with British Rail. There's... I can't get supermods my trains anymore. They need to be treated with respect. Like, I understand skill trees in certain situations because it does give player more options when it comes to how they want to build their character. Yeah. But, like, outside of an RPG, I'm not really for it. Yeah. And even then, even, and even then, here's my, here's my issue with that. Do you know what the heavily successful RPG series never had a skill tree? Kingdom Hearts. Oh, here we go again with the Kingdom Hearts. My point being is that RPGs don't need this kind of depth all the time. You don't... Like, okay, my big issue with the FPS genre is to be blunt with the FPS genre. Unless you're really into it, no one can tell the difference between Battlefield, Halo, or Call of Duty. If you're not into what makes those games unique, no one's going to care. British Rail now causes total organ failure. Wow. <laughs> Seemed necessary. <clears throat> so, like, when all of these games are frequently putting in skill trees, when all of these games are frequently putting in these exact same mechanics and copying so constantly that nothing is unique anymore, all of these games are the same. And at this point, I feel like it would be more unique to make an RPG in this, in the more simple style of something like Just Kingdom Hearts. Just the plate Hearts that was up there, it's fine. Sorry, go ahead. And, re and release it nowadays. I think that would be more unique than any game with a skill tree right now. <laughs> Because I think the other interesting thing about how Kingdom Hearts ended up doing, like, it's, it's, um, the way that you got abilities and stuff like that is that it wasn't actually dependent on, it wasn't, like, the reason it wasn't dependent on a skill tree is because you essentially built a class. British Rail has weapons. destroyed the world despite, despite the world's best efforts, the last few humans lie dying in holes with no chance of survival. Oh no. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> at 3, the Sejun says in the chat, What have you done? You were the chosen one! You were supposed to stop BR, not help them take over the world! Now it's all... <laughs> now it's all BR! Even my food is BR! Well, now the world has efficient and affordable public transportation. It's not efficient at all, and you know that! <laughs> the virus called British Rail just wiped out the world in 613 days. That's all it took, Ow. people. 613 days of British Rail. They couldn't handle... Nobody could handle it. Yeah. I could look through custom scenarios just for funsies. These are sometimes really funny. <laughs> There's Trumpitis. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't know about that. Nuclear warfare. Yeah. Hmm. Realistic zombie virus mod. Alien hive mind. Chlorovirus, Cabin Fever, Plague of Insanity, that one. Pokemon Go. <laughs> hey, hey, Josh. You know, you know what your new virus should be called? The Darkness. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> MyDoom.exe, a dangerous computer worm first spotted in 2004, damaging countless devices during its reign. Unfortunately, due to better security worldwide, this virus has faded. But what if we gave this old worm an upgrade? <gasps> oh no. This is actually based on an actual computer virus. Oh wow. <laughs> parasite of the Void. You were a parasite that came from the Void. You do not know how you got on Earth, but you know you will destroy all human life on it. But first, you must mutate and upgrade yourself as you are not strong enough. So evolve? Y yeah, that's that's about right. Addy! Well, if Addy's here, I have to do Trumpitis and rename it to British Rail. <laughs> Can't hear you at the moment, Addy. Don't know if you're muted or something. I once again joined the chat just to realize I have no idea what the hell's going on. Josh is playing Plague Inc. Oh! My friend played Eddie. Plague Inc. once in school, and then he really annoyed me, so I went up to his computer and pressed Alt F4 right, right when he was about to win. <laughs> Trump has won Ooh. as president, and a secret disease has escaped one lab named Trumpitis. This enables him to rule the world as he pleases. The goal of Trumpitis is to infect the entire world or kill them. Symptoms help you do this. Oh, now it's saying British Rail. It's a Nurax worm. Undiscovered for thousands of years. Now humans have entered its natural habitat and given meats to spread. We're gonna make British Rail great again. Oh, by the way, Josh, out of curiosity, uh, what software are you are you using to stream tonight? XSplit. Nice. I mean, Plague Inc. is not a very taxing game, so... Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, have you gotten a chance to mess around with OBS for actually streaming? I mean, to be fair, I have been gone for a I few kinda days. just gave up on it because I realized it was doing the same thing that XSplit does. I mean, like, it's got I some, it's got, some, it's got some neat features, but I'm like, eh. The real fun, the real fun thing is I might have to pay a thousand dollars to get my car fixed. So that's fun. That's great. Lovely. It's a good situation I'm in. Anyway, I'm back. I'm, I'm playing Plague Inc. now. Have you considered investing in a scooter? Shut up, Kane. Okay. 
<laughs> did you did you ever get a chance to check out those videos I sent you by the way? <clears throat> yes. I, I I love that guy's style. He's very, very cool with how he does it. Very informative and with some good humor to boot. Always a good fan of that. It's so much fun, Samu. It's it's great. I am having so much fun right now. Get out! When I finally get around to this, I very much want to build a desk with a big, thick piece of wood on top of it so I never have to worry about warping, or at least not for a long time. Because my keyboard is so much louder because it, it doesn't sit flat on the plastic thing. British rail worm, it grows. British Rail just another parasite. Scientists tell public not to worry about British Rail. Although unpleasant, it does not appear to cause any symptoms in humans and will be easily cured. Those fools.
They know nothing of the truth. The world will pay for their hubris. One second. Infected worship British Rail. People infected with British Rail are reporting visions of rapture and a glorious new overlord species. Without a cure, life as we know it will be over. Of course. Oh, now British Rail's been placed on the World Health Organization watch list. Okay. It's a little late for that. By the way, Josh, to go back on my topic for just a for just a second, as for how much I don't like skill trees. Um, you know, a game came out in the last like five years that didn't have any kind of skill trees that was massively successful that people really need to look at. It, it's its name rhymes with Breath of the Wild. It was an immensely successful game that had no skill trees whatsoever. The only upgrading that you did is that you exchanged spirit orbs for health or stamina. Violently successful. One of the most successful open world games of all time at this point. I'm going to make British Rail a zombie virus this time. <laughs> just feel like that we can do stuff without skill trees and have it work. It's frustrating that more companies don't do that. <laughs> British... Ways. British Railways. <laughs> Starting to the UK just like 28 days later. <laughs> and then, 
five minutes later, Teddy joins the call. Oh, for you have summoned him. I have summoned him. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He won't come in five minutes. That's too early. He'll come in 28 days later. He was sitting by himself on the call earlier. I I talked with him earlier today, but I ended up having to go and just kind of like chill. My my social battery has been pretty pretty well depleted, so I've been napping and just chilling and mostly silence. Also, I tried to do a minor bit of cleaning, which um, didn't go great. <laughs> so... At least you that. tried. Yeah. I did get an area kind of cleaned up a little bit, but it was more like, cool, I moved some crap around, that's it. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I have a favorite Australian diesel locomotive that's oddly specific. Spread again, Kate. Oh, no. Soon the world will know of the glory of British Rail. Still very much looking forward to Grand Blue Cancer <laughs> <Canada>. Sorry. <laughs> I can involve British Railways to have hyper salivation. Inflammation of the submandibular gland increases saliva production and infection rates. So I can literally turn these people into foamers. Is what we're getting Lovely. at. Um, do you know what a foamer is, Kane? No. Okay, FOMER is kind of a negative term among the rail fan community. Okay. Um, regular rail fans, you know, are rail fans, but FOMERs are people, the joke is that they literally salivate at the sight of a train. Ah. Like, they're, they're way too crazy about the whole thing. That's what FOMER means. So naturally, I'm going to turn these people into FOMERs. It seems reasonable. Uh... <laughs> Kind of like, kind of like the, kind of like the term Gen One for a Pokemon. We've been over this. I am one of those. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I've been over. Do you, do you think that every generation past one is absolutely worthless and not, and nothing of value will ever come of them? Yes. No. No, I don't think that. And you're not a Gen One. <laughs> I should play Pokemon tomorrow. That's what I should do. Yeah. And you should play the best Pokemon game. Watch what you're about to say. Pokemon Ranger! Shut the hell up. Okay. Mass panic over 3D printed robotic juicer. New robotic juicer banned in 17 countries after UN report highlighted its profoundly disturbing behavior. Authorities trying to restrict access to the CAD file. <laughs> What? <laughs> um, so, I will say that I do 
I, I joke about that. Like, I don't think it's the best, but I do think Pokemon Ranger is really good and underappreciated. I'm sure it is. Most like, it's. I've heard yeah. it's a good game, but... The best? No. But I do think it's probably, like, the best quality spin-off game. Because... I, I think it, it's it's one of the only ones that never really outstayed its welcome. Excuse me, because like Mystery Dungeon went on for so long. British Railways infects thousands, Kane. Ranger games. I've got the first one and Shadow, and the second one, Shadows of Almia. I still need to pick up a copy of um, of Guardian Signs, and I pretty much beat the first Ranger game, and it was pretty awesome. British Railway spreads to Italy. God, it's everywhere. Scientists concerned about British railways. Same. Uh... <laughs>
<laughs> Partial genetic activation causes rat packs to attack humans. Significantly increases infectivity. <laughs> British Rail will send the horde of rats after people. Oh no, and now the rats are going to evolve. They will gain sentience. They'll stand on two legs. And the worst will happen. They'll, they'll, they'll build rat trains. I, I was going to say they'll train turtles to be ninjas, but that works too, I guess. And that's, it. that's their backup strategy, okay? Clearly one of them didn't work out. I've been so much wanting to go back and, like, really... parts of the TMNT animated series stuff. Like, the 2003 show was really freaking good. Um, I, I like what I've seen so far of the... of the, the CGI reboot. Uh, and also Rise of the TMNT actually looks pretty freaking awesome, and I really want to sit down and watch that. British Railways begins to reanimate the dead! No. So, uh, so as a side note, Josh, Snapcube has released a new, uh, fan dub. Oh? Shadow the Hedgehog. No. No. No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, oh, um, were, were you around when I told you one of the other cool things I picked up recently? I, I bought, um, I bought a UMD movie. Oh? Do you remember when those were a thing? I do, I actually have a few. Yeah. Um, now the reason I bought it is because A, it is a movie from my childhood, B, not only was it complete, it was sealed in its plastic wrap. Huh. I bought a UMD video version of Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal. I didn't know that was out on UMD. Yeah. I bought it brand new for $8. I just think it's so ridiculous and cool. Like, it was such a weird time, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, on one hand, it was kind of neat having movies on the go like that, because that was before smartphones. Yeah, definitely. I think the other cool thing about it, too, is there was one other UMD video that I owned, and I'm kind of sad I got rid of it now that I'm thinking on it. Um, I, should, I should go rebuy it at some point. But I had Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within, and oh, the God. only reason I got, the only reason I got rid of it is because I bought the two-disc special edition DVD, and uh, more importantly, what I had gotten was uh, the case. I only had the UMD movie of The Spirits Within, so like, <laughs> I only had the I only had the the UMD itself. But yeah, it was. I wonder, is there a list? List of every UMD movie. <laughs> Do you know what movie was released on PSP UMD video? Do I want to know? Is the question. Twenty-eight days. Twenty-eight days later. You know what else was released on on it? What? The remake of Dawn of the Dead. I know this because that's where I own that movie. <laughs> <laughs> also, Agent Cody Banks? Okay. Yeah, that was a thing for a while, wasn't it? I like that movie, actually. It, it was a dumb movie, but it wasn't necessarily a bad movie. Like. Yeah, it was It was entertaining. It was very silly. It, like, like here, here's my thing. Here's my thing. I think that a lot of parody movies that people tend to like really suck. And, and I'm not just talking my opinion. I am talking, like, the scary movie films, disaster movie, date movie, and all of those. They are terrible films. They're not even funny. Like, they're just not good movies. They're kind of working with a bit of a low bar here, because I think the I think the amount of actual good parody movies is pretty low. Mm -hmm. Air Airplane is pretty good. Spaceballs still holds up pretty well. Um, what was the other one? Um, Robin Hood Men in Tights is a classic. Um, Austin Powers I think would technically be a parody movie series. Most of those are generally pretty watchable. I like but the first really... Austin Powers and no more. The, my my first my first introduction to Austin Powers was Gold Member, and then I went backwards. Yeah. But in terms of like good parody movies, <laughs> Ben Ten Race Against Time. <laughs> um. But, uh, but, like, the list of good parody movies is not that big. So, in terms of, like, having a fun kids parody movie that actually kind of held up decently, Agent Cody Banks is one of the better ones. If you think that one was just okay, might I remind you, it had a sequel. What? I did yeah, not know that. Yeah, there's two Agent Cody Banks movies. Blade. Blood Rain. <laughs> I 
Yeah, that movie was a thing during that time. Yep. Weirdly enough, I had one of my friend's dads try to describe Blade as Prince of Persia, and I'm like, what? No. <laughs> Not even close to that. Yeah. I think it was Blade, anyway. Cowboy Bebop. Wait, Volume 1? What does that mean? Oh no. Zcom eradicated British Railways. Oh no. I have to try again. There's the Dark Crystal, there's the Dark Knight, no thank you. I hate that fucking movie. Sorry. Wow. What'd that movie ever do to you? My friend made me watch it, that's what happened. Which movie? The Dark Knight. It is a really good movie. I hate it. <laughs> really? I mean, I I'm sorry. Are, are we forgetting? Like, I, I hated every second of that film. Every time. I was so mad. The only Batman movie I've ever watched and somewhat enjoyed is Batman Begins. That was the only one. And even then, enjoy is a bit of a strong word. The Dark Knight is vastly superior to Begins. In pretty much every conceivable way. No, it's not. What do you? What didn't you like about the Dark Knight? It was dark. See, I hated that's, it. Th this is where I'm. This is where we diverge again. Y you know I how I hate. am. I know exactly. Like we're just different in that way. I just hated every like, like it was so much darker than I expected it to be for a Batman film, and it just irritated me the whole time. And, and it, it, it was even worse for the fact that my friend thought it was a good idea to show it to me. I mean, I want you to remember one of the particular scenes in that movie and tell me one other reason why I'm so angry at that at that guy. I mean, you remember, you remember when the Joker made something disappear? <laughs> I know why. I. Totally know why you had a problem with it. Uh... My friend, my friend is honestly really lucky that I didn't snag the disc out of 360 and crack it right in front of him. I was so angry. Hated that movie. Both Advent Children and Spirits Within were released on PSP UMD. Yep. Pretty much any movie that was a product of that time was on UMD. Because at the time, people thought it was a viable platform. Yeah. And in the era before smartphones, I think people were too hard on UMDs. Because, like, I got it. Like, it made sense. And it was kind of neat. The, the issue with UMDs, ultimately, for me at least, is... The fragile plastic the shell. Yeah, it was it was a garbage fragile shell. Also, I just have to point something out for you. Every movie at that time, right? Ghostbusters. <laughs> okay, well, you know, they had to put some of the classics on there too. Oh, absolutely. But wow, like I like I'm looking through this list, Josh. I'm at number 270. Happy Gilmore, uh, Harry Potter, from Goblet, Chamber, Sorcerer, and Prisoner. God, Happy Gilmore. That's a product of that time. I don't know if it holds up, but I remember really liking it. No one in my high school would shut the hell up about Adam Sandler and Adam Sandler movies. I understand that being annoying. Like, no, Adam someone... Sandler movies? What? I said, Ill Adam Sandler movies, only some of them are good. Most of them are meh. I, I'm a casual Adam Sandler fan. I think he's funny. I'm not, like, a diehard or anything. 
I, I do think he can be really funny. I think he I think he's a good actor. Like like one of my favorite Adam Sandler movies is Bedtime Stories. I think that it is a fun comedy with just a lot of good heartwarming scenes in it too. Like it's not a bad film by any means. I don't think any of the films are bad. I just think that they're very mid and most people praise them as if they're literally God's gift to the planet. Yeah, like, even I, I more agree important that, than that's... Jesus Christ himself. Like, and I'm just like, bro, it's an Adam Sandler movie. It is not a cinematography piece of like peak cinema. Like, it's just it's it's a fine movie. Yeah. Initial. Like, D. When, like, I like Click. I thought Click was a good movie, even though it was way more brutal than it was funny. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that got real, real fast for. No reason. <laughs> yeah, like I, I remember looking at it thinking it was really funny, and then it got serious for the last part. And I'm like, why? What? Why? <laughs> it hurt, bro. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good movie. But yeah, it's it, it, it like the, I I just I think a lot of Adam Sandler movies are good, but like. I, I don't understand, like, the crazy praise. It, it's kind of the same thing for Jack Black, where, like, a lot of people super insanely praise him and everything he's in, and I do think he does an excellent job, and he's a great actor, but, like... i am be real I, with I you. i am be real with you since you brought it up. Since you hmm. brought it up. Gulliver's Travels with Jack Black? Worst freaking movie I have ever seen in my goddamn life. You've never seen it, so I don't it's know. I've never seen it. Horrible. It is. I like School of Rock. Like, I and, I, and, and I like the story, movie. Gulliver's Travels, and that movie, just terrible. Uh, absolutely terrible. I've only what? seen two Jack Black movies. Oh. And one of them was Kung Fu Panda. Like, <laughs> me. Uh, How to Rock or whatever. What is it? What how? Can't like School of Rock or whatever it is. The one with the kids he has to teach how to make a band. Yeah, that's School of Rock. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I I know I know Kung Fu Panda. I've watched Tenacious D and The Pick of Destiny, which is my all-time favorite Jack Black thing ever. Um, I've seen I've seen School of Rock. I've seen uh, I played Brutal Legend. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> never got far, but I I have played it. Um. There's more Jack Black stuff I'm familiar with, but I'm spacing it right now. But I, I, I like him. He's cool. I don't know. I was always one of those people that I grew up watching like weird movies that weren't the most popular thing ever, but my dad loved watching obscure movies. Mm -hmm. So like, what, what was it called? Hold on. Oh my god, The Princess Bride was released. That's awesome. My, my dad and I loved watching A Knight's Tale. Night's Tale oh, is, is is actually a cult classic, so that's fair. <laughs> funny because I, I never see anybody mention it or bring it up, and every time I mention it, they're like, what is that? And I'm just like, I get offended, like, just because that's such a good movie. I love that movie. Five hundred and fifteen, by the way. I'm still mad at the, the new Cinderella movie. Why? Because they had the audacity oh, hell. to do somebody to love and thought that they could do it better than Ella Enchanted. Not a chance in hell, brother. Not a chance in hell. Oh, Anne Hathaway, so cool. Anne, Hath Anne Hathaway continues to be an iconic queen. Josh. Yes. There, there was something released on UMD quote video called the Silent Hill Experience, and I had no idea what it was. It was released in North America in 2006, and it is it is a an interactive collection of digital comics, music, videos, and trailers. Well, they can't do that now. They can't make trailers for games that don't exist. That's so cool! That's such a unique way to do something like that! I love it!
556. The Office, the complete first series. Oh, that's nice though. <laughs> it's very funny. I like The Office. I was in a business club thing where we had to. Like, we had actual interviews with entrepreneurs to prove our like business knowledge and stuff. It was like a whole club that was supposed to teach you like business management skills. Yeah. And I bring this all up because while I was there, the amount of people who pulled up their their laptops and were just watching the office while waiting for their turn to get interviewed was staggering. There was whole watch parties of just the office. And I was like, why is everybody watching this one show? <laughs> everybody here. You don't mess with office fans. But like, everybody was an office fan. Right? Yeah. I was like, I walked into a cult. <laughs> Bears <laughs> beats <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. <laughs> Millions of families suffer every year. Michael! Oh, that's really funny. Michael! <laughs> I've never seen... I've also never seen The Room. But I have seen... It's okay. I've seen the mockumentary of The Room. Which was very funny. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Both of the Tomb Raider movies were released. Oh, hi, doggy. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're at the ultimate list of 667 UMD movies released. That's just and one I number say... away from being Satan. Yeah. And I think the newest release was probably... Excuse me, it was probably... 2010. Uh, that's 2011. Okay, okay. The the most recent, the last, the last movie to be released is The Hangover Part Two in 2011. I haven't watched movies since I stopped hanging out with my dad because we used to watch. That was the only reason why I ever watched like the shit ton of movies. Like I think the only movies I've ever kept up with on my own volition are like the How to Train Your Dragon movies. Very good movies. Oh, it's not like my favorite movie series of all time. Like, one of them. I I, I love How to Train Your Dragon. I, I'm really sad because uh, my brother has been trying to find his copy of How to Train Your Dragon 2 because me and my family have had, we, we started uh, we started two marathons, neither of which we've been able to finish. Uh, but we started Star Wars and we How started Dragon How to Train Your Dragon 2 is on Netflix. <gasps> oh my god, it's on Netflix! It's been oh, on Netflix for years. I, I rewatch that movie all the time. It's my favorite of the three. Nice. And that's a sacrilegious thing to say, apparently, because people didn't like 2 very much, which I just think everybody that's says ridiculous. that was wrong. 2 was That's ridiculous. Was, 2 was the only one I liked. I don't really like that series very much. 2 was really good, and I think, it, it, I think what made it great for me was that I watched the show, which leads directly into How to Train Your Dragon 2 almost perfectly. Yeah. Like, you don't have to watch the show to understand anything. But it's cool because there's so many like really cool nods that they do to th to to the movie or, like to the show. Yeah. Like that's where that's because uh, Hiccup and Astrid when they kissed the end of the first movie, that is not when they got together officially. They were actually like, really awkward after that. And it was a lot of them traveling around to the different islands and like getting to know each other better and not like because like at the end of the day Astrid, like, bullied him, like, all of the first movies. So acting as if they just kissed and suddenly just got together after the end of the first movie is, like, really awkward when you think about it. I'm not even sure if she really bullied him. She, she, okay, she didn't, like, she she didn't really contribute. She did make fun of him a little bit, but, like, it was, that was mostly Rough Night, a Tough Night that did. Yeah, yeah. But, like, and, she and, sat and... around and, like, basically validated everything that they said. Was She was basically like, you're not taking it seriously, you're a whip and you need to give up. Like, on top of all the shit that they were doing. Yeah. 
By the way, are you streaming? I just realized I should have guessed yeah. this. Oh, I will stop. I sorry. I didn't. I actually didn't know mm -hmm. you were streaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. But she kind of just allowed a lot of stuff to happen. Not necessarily contributed heavily, but she definitely was. She she definitely just allowed it to happen. And so like things were awkward a little bit, but they actually got like they, they got to know each other really well and were just really nice to each other and they found a sense of like camaraderie and understanding with each other that was more than just like oh the two the guy and the girl character have to get together by like the end of the first movie right yeah what what I, what I liked about their relationship in the first movie is that it, it wasn't really like it wasn't really anything about her trying to to bully him or whatever it's that she she just wanted to know what was up with him because like he kept acting strange and things just started getting weird in dragon training that he was actually doing something like really well she only really warmed up to him after he stopped being like essentially a wimp and a waste of space to her which like to be fair he wasn't a social guy it was awkward but at the same time the fact that it was just like there was like just an air of awkwardness after the first movie in the show where like they're friends now and like they kiss so there's like something but they're also trying to figure it out and i really liked that because it felt like they really like organically grew the relationship which is why when you go into the second movie and they banter so well like that's what we got used to after watching the show yeah and so it feels like you're perfectly at home and like they really know each other very well and it's like it feels natural also, it explains where Hiccup got his really cool sword thing that like turns into fire and like uh, shoots cool. out poisonous gas. Like he makes that in the show. That's awesome. Yeah, I I really like those Sorry, movies. I'm, I'm a stupid geek for this movie series. I we got that's that. Totally fine. Like I want I want to sit down and watch the third one. It's the only one I really haven't seen. Cause I I just. That was the catalyst to all this, because I had found a Blu-ray copy for like three dollars at a second-hand store, and I'm like, yes, please. So yeah, I'll hopefully be able to sit down and watch that as um, now that I know it's on Netflix. Like, I can just hop on there and start it up whenever me and my family have free time to do that. It it also has one of my favorite like songs in all of movies, like. It's not even a musical, like, they don't usually have, like, songs in it. But yeah. when Valka... When Valka and Stoic start singing... Mm -hmm. I, like, literally cry every time! It's so cute! Yeah, I think I remember that scene a little bit. It's been so long since I've seen How to Train Your Dragon 2. And it is a very good movie. I, I, I've heard a lot of people not liking it either, and I just... I don't, I don't understand it. I don't agree. It's literally the best movie out of the three. There's so much heart in it, and you, like, really can... They they really made sure that it felt... Everything felt organic to the characters. Even, like, a lot of people were mad at, like, the thing that happened with Toothless, and I'm like, but, like... That wasn't Toothless's fault. That wasn't Toothless's fault, and, like, even... Hiccup gets really upset at first for obvious reasons, but even he recognizes that it wasn't anything that was in 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 Toothless's control. Yeah, like, he can't get mad at him for that. Yeah, and that and that was another scene that like someone I talked to is like, yeah, I, I I just I just hate that trope when they do that, and I'm like, I felt you like they were the only times they ever did that trope well. Like, I usually hate that trope too, but I felt like it actually was well executed in that case. Yeah, like, because, like, I'm sitting here like, you understand how big of a deal that is for that guy, right? Character development-wise? Like, did you, did you ignore what happened in the first one? Because I feel like that's a pretty big thing after that. Like that was that was such a big character development moment, and it was Hiccup awesome. Was 
Hiccup is just one of my favorite characters of all time in general. I just feel like he's really well written in a lot of ways. I actually find- it's funny because I actually find How to Train Your Dragon 1 Hiccup annoying. But like in a- I guess in a good way? But like he- I, I feel like he's- he, he definitely has not grown into himself and it shows. <laughs> like... I mean, yeah, but like he is like- no, that's what I'm that saying. Like, that was the point. That's why I'm saying I can't get mad at it for it. Yeah. But it still annoys me because, like, after watching How to Train Your Dragon 2 so much, I can't let my brain go back to the annoying version of him that exists. Yeah. Because I'm I used to this that. grown version of him that I've seen in, like, 2 and 3 in the show. It's It's never been too much of an issue for me to go back on certain characters like that because I because since I know how they develop, I, I understand that this is their beginning. This is this is the start. This is okay, something like, that I know. When I'm marathoning not... the movies. Huh? I will watch all when I'm marathoning the movies, I will watch all three. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like I can always go back to that and that's fine. There are very few times where that happens. Um and I couldn't tell you which ones are an exact idea of this, because I can't remember. But but yeah, like very rarely does it happen when a character is so poorly written that I can't go back to the originals. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he's poorly written. More than it is he's just annoying. Yeah. But even like the annoying thing for me is something along the lines of as long as I as long as the character actually goes through development and does stuff, as long as it's not too annoying, I'm usually pretty good about it. Um Oh god, what character was it? It's bothering me now. Like Oh god, okay, okay. Technically it's a prequel and technically um, okay, so there is a character, I remember it now, but it's irritating because it's the character from the third game that I can't stand, even though it- even though that's the one everyone yeah. loves. I cannot tolerate anything involving Dante from Devil May Cry 3. <laughs> I, I'm about to blow everybody's minds here, and I don't actually. I don't think I am. I think this is a pretty. This is probably a pretty all brand thing for me to say. Never played a Double May Cry in my life. Saw that coming. I watched the anime. That's... I love the anime. No, the anime is terrible. Yeah. yeah it has I've actually been really moment. interested in playing Five because Five looks really good. But I heard if I jumped into Five, I wouldn't understand a single thing that's happening. I would say, I would say, go the Kingdom Hearts route, watch a one-hour breakdown of Devil May Cry lore, and then play Five. Okay. Because if you, if, if you're looking at Five, and you think that looks fun, and you're really not interested in going back to the old ones, I think that's a pretty good one for that, because, like, DMC5 is extremely good from a gameplay perspective. They took everything good about the reboot and incorporated it into the main series, and it- and it- Like, okay, dear Devil May Cry fanbase, you can hate on the reboot all you want. Okay, go for it, I don't care. I love the reboot. Admit one thing, that it was good that it happened, because if it didn't happen, Five would not be nearly as good as it is. See, the thing is, for me, when it comes to older games, I- I'm perfect- I could be perfectly honest, uh, I am too used to games having good mechanics. I can't go back to old games that have, like, tank controls. I just can't. Like, my brain was not wired for that. Okay? I, I, started, I started playing games on the GameCube. I yep. was not built for this life. I understand that completely. I really do. Because, like, that's... That's kind of my frustration that I was talking about with uh, Josh a while back, where, to be honest with you, I'm getting kind of kind of burnt out on old school games because they're the only ones that are that are actually like capable of capturing me in any sense of the word. I literally just went through all of the games that were that was announced at Gamescon 2022, and I looked at like 16 or 17 
maybe even like 18 of the new releases, and I'm just like, they all look like they all look like trash. I, I hate them all. Every single one of them looks bad and boring and stupid, and it, it, none of them have any kind of originality or heart in it outside of must look hyper realistic. Also, skill trees. Um, <laughs> I like that also skill trees part because that's very true. Yeah, because it's like we need I customization in our games to feel like all the characters, like everybody's individual playthrough matters. Skill tree. <laughs> yeah, like, that is so that skill is like I don't mind skill trees, but I admit some games just don't need them. I also just think that they're like the band aid solution that it, people it really have. Is everything and it's like there's other ways you can do something interesting with customization or like changing people's experience in the game that isn't just basic skill trees like if i see three branches of skill trees one heal one tank one dps side like style i'm gonna like, lose my mind because it's like anything else it's not like this generic stuff please i've seen this fifteen thousand quadrillion billion times can I point out, the only game that I've ever played that has an interesting skill tree system, and no one's gonna like me for this, but here we go. <laughs> hmm? Does anyone remember Kingdoms of Amalur? Oh, I thought he was gonna say Kingdom Hearts for a second, I was about to snap out. No idea what you're talking <laughs> about! <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning is a 2012 third-person action RPG made by, I think it was like 308 Studios or something like that, or 38, I don't know. It's a defunct company. They were trying to make two games. Uh, the only one they ended up making was Kingdom of Zamlor. It sold so poorly because Skyrim was released. Chalk that up to another reason I hate Skyrim. Um, so... Kind of like how Haunting Ground released and sold terribly because it came out at like, literally the same exact time. The fucking Resident Evil 4 came out, and they were like, I can't believe our horror games sold poorly when Resident Evil 4 came out. What? Yeah, and one of them is better, and the other one is Resident Evil 4. Hey! <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just wait, kidding. wait, I thought you were insulting Haunting Ground, not praising it. Never mind, I take it back. That's totally yeah. fine. Haunting <laughs> Ground is just phenomenal. It really still, is. I'm still- I found out about Haunted Ground literally so late. I found out about it like late 2021, early 2022, and I fell in love with this game. But when I found out how much it got screwed over by the world, I just was devastated because I was like, I desperately want something like this. I want to play this. And then I was like, you know what? I heard emulating it is really hard. I'm gonna buy a car $400. <laughs> yep. And I was like, I, okay, I guess I'm just going to be devastated forever. And I was like, I heard Rule of Rose is really similar. Maybe I'll try looking for Rule of Rose. $700. Okay. Suffer. <laughs> Suffer, I guess. And people wonder why piracy is a thing. <laughs> oh my god, it's a mystery. <laughs> so. Kingdoms of Amalur has a very interesting skill tree system, or at least way more interesting than any other game I've seen, because it does one thing unique. You pick your class. And by that, I mean you pick a starting class of something that you want to progress through in your tree. That doesn't mean that you can't upgrade the other skill trees. That just means that's the skill tree that you are primarily focusing on. And as you progress that skill tree, if you want to start using any other... If you want to start using a magic weapon or anything, then do it. You're not limited. You can just... You're free to go to it. But you're. But if you want to use it well, you're going to have to upgrade stuff in that skill tree. But the interesting part is later down the line when you're upgrading these. The more you upgrade multiple skill trees, you can basically combine the skill trees into a new class that has its own kind of abilities and its own benefits so like the higher that you raise the skill trees you can actually go between all of these classes at the click of a button so yeah it's still a normal skill tree but you're working towards other classes with other abilities by getting to certain points in those skill tree combinations hmm. 
Like it, it's the one thing I have seen that took that takes the skill tree system and gives it an interesting spin. And no one cared about that game because no one would stop skyrimming all over the place. I just think a lot of com I just think a lot of companies overestimate how much people want to customize things. I agree with that too. I am so frustrated at that. Like, okay, look, customization is great, but guys, here's the thing. We want visual customization. We don't care about anything else. Most people want visual customization. We want good character creation. We want good color changing on outfits. We want to be able to mess around with what our weapons look like. Visual customization. We don't care about anything else. If your gameplay is really solid, then you shouldn't have to compensate for your gameplay by making it have a bunch of customization options just to keep people, keep people engaged. You should just be able to play the game. It's one of the few reasons I really like Breath of the Wild, because Breath of the Wild does not waste your time. You don't like minute. Breath of Wait the Wild. Wait a minute, I was to say, you don't like Breath of the Wild? What are you talking about? It is, it is, it is one of the most wildly polarizing games in my entire life. Because I, I whiplash so hard back and forth between all of my different opinions on Breath of the Wild. I think it is the most overrated and overhyped Zelda game in the world, and that is true. And then the next minute, I'm sitting here crying because Cass is playing his freaking accordion. Josh, can I just state that the whole entire world is slowly becoming poisoned, and then it's just Australia. Hold on, Australia. I'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> Even America's kind of chilling. I'm spreading my shadow plague. <laughs> but yeah, like, Breath of the Wild still has a lot of heart in it in terms of the actual world building, the the, the game design, or not game design, the, like... No matter what I think, about how irritatingly difficult Breath of the Wild is, and how stupid it is for how frequently your weapons break, and how little ability you have to do anything effective, like, in comparison to other Zelda games. Well, speaking of stupid game design, weapon durability. Get I rid hate of it. it. Just get rid of it. Like, it just, it's never, it, it is never added to a gaming experience, ever. And if just you're going to... And if you're going to have weapon durability, might I suggest having what White Knight Chronicles did, and that every save point you get to, or safe zone, there's a button- Bye, that Australia! That- <laughs> Oh, oh that, my that, god, that, <laughs> The darkness will consume you! Yo, yo, oh my god, I got- okay. Speaking of Australia for a minute, um, I don't know if I talked about this with you guys, uh, I watched both of the Rescuer movies, like, half a year ago, and the sequel was freaking wild. That was such a weird movie. I don't think I've ever seen it. The Rescuers Down Under is... The, the sequel to, to to the rescuers and it's it's generally considered really really good and I agree but man it was a strange movie sometimes I uh, like I mentioned I I so rarely watch movies nowadays like it's just baffling Kane I sent you a message about that Netflix show I was watching and that's the first Netflix show I've watched in like four months like I just don't watch TV anymore understandable uh, I watched um I don't know if anybody here knows about it. But, uh, it's called Fear Street. I have not heard about it. It's like a horror trilogy on Netflix. I've watched the first two. I've watched the last one. Gotcha. It was actually, like, pretty good. It's based off of, like, Goosebumps books. I actually really enjoyed it, though. Nice. Like, I genuinely would recommend it. And I say that as somebody who doesn't actually like horror- I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't hate horror movies anymore. I actually like horror movies a decent amount. I used to hate them. I don't really anymore. But even so, I'm still very particular on what horror movies I watch.
But Fear Street was good. I mean, apparently Fear Street didn't do very well, ratings-wise. But... I thought it was good. But that's- that's my opinion on everything. I constantly like things that nobody else likes, so like, hmm, I don't know. I know that feel. But that's usually my taste in movies. Like, I was talking- I, Josh, Teddy, and I were talking about Resident Evil, and I was talking about how I think the Resident Evil, like, especially the CGI movies, are not bad. People just have too high expectations. And I, I stand firm by that, because I think all of the CGI movies are really good and really enjoyable pieces of media. People are looking at them for the next piece of, like, horror cinema that's gonna scare the bejeebus out of them, and I'm like, that's not... I don't think Resident Evil shows have <coughs> tried to be Why scary? would I kick you for living in the UK? And I do read the chat, I'll have you know. People think I don't read the chat. How dare mm -hmm. you tell them that, Addy? What? Exactly. No, I told them that. I knew it. I've totally, I've totally got the stream open right now, and I'm totally reading every single message. You said because British Rail. I mean, I, I I'm so interested in this lore about British Rail not, and why you guys oh. have drama. Like, I just want to know now. Yes, almost. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be our last game, guys. We'll try to win by spreading British Rail around the world. Around the world oh. in eighty trains. Okay, oh, somebody just made a, a comment that you would love. Oh, I love Dark, you are the reason why this content remains infectious. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading it to Kane because Kane didn't see because he doesn't have the chat open. Oh, well, that's very neat. Let us begin. British Railways begins in the UK. British Railways infected its first human, weak, and used to cold temperatures. It must evolve using DNA points to infect more people. Uh oh. British Railways is a Nurax worm, undiscovered for thousands of years. Now humans have entered its natural habitat and given it the means to spread. Tour optic set. I'm way too baked for this. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand's center of magnetic field shift. A recent fluctuation in the Earth's magnetic field is claimed by scientists to be strong enough to be harnessed by New Zealand as a source of power. Weird, but okay. Oh no, my Valorant team is winning and they're talking- they're talking mad garbage in chat. No. This is how we end up losing! Stop! <laughs> yeah. I just want to get to Silver 3 by the end of today, please. But yeah, Bre Breath of the Wild is just one of those games that when when it is when it's holding back its difficulty and just letting me be a part of it it's incredibly awesome and then i get into combat and then i said <laughs> i'm sorry what's up uh, i need, i'm reading your, your, your comment that you have me gotcha yeah, it's probably about how that jerk Josh is still hanging out with you. Can't stand it. What? No, you see me with Dr. Wiles. Oh, okay. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I didn't want to interrupt when you were talking, it, it so could, I just typed it out. <laughs> it could have been about me, though. 
Man, it really sucks that Josh doesn't like Zelda. Like, seriously. What person doesn't like Ocarina of Time? It's the greatest game ever made. Uh. We, we, we liked Majora's Mask. And went like, God, Wind Waker? Terrible. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that line of dialogue was more toxic than any plague I could hope to create. <laughs> Josh, people are being nice to you in the chat. I am! Everyone- people- I usually get comments about my voice being bad. How dare you talk like this? God, you sound terrible! Imagine Why are you- enjoying things. Why are you having fun when you talk about history? Stop having fun! Be boring! Like the rest of us! Hello everyone, today on History in the Dark, we will be talking about... Trains. Flame. For, for you see, people have asked me to talk in a plain way, so I will be talking about planes. In 1949, British Railways was first established as a government-run body to secure the UK's railway system. It had several missteps throughout the years. But ultimately, it served to benefit all of mankind. God, you know, it's, it's funny. Like, if I talk like that, if I ever talk like that, it's either an April Fool's joke, or <laughs> or my brain is infected with the British Railway's Nerax worm, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> In 1943, British Rail constructed the very first train in the sky. That's... They called that, it the sky train. It's, that's not what happened. Um, for you see, they want you to trail. talk like they want you to talk like like John Green for some reason. Immaturity, like hormone John production Green. altered, which causes reduction in maturity, lower levels of hygiene, increase infection. Oh, I was gonna make the most awful joke. Let me not get you canceled, Ellen. <laughs> Please <laughs> do not. <laughs> Twitter is always watching. <laughs> yeah, I, with what I was gonna say, yeah. 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 Uh. In Final Fantasy VI, there is a train that you suplex. And if we look at its design, we can tell it is... A British Rail Train. Ugh. Because a good train company would not allow the trains to be suplexed. Are, are you done? Yes. By the way, uh, speaking of just open world RPGs for a minute, I'm so excited, even though we're like probably four or five years away from this. Please, please don't be. Uh, but oh my god, Dragon's Dogma 2! Yay! I'm very excited about that. That is nice that they're actually gonna do it. I love Dragon's Dogma so much. Also, apparently the KOTOR remake was sent to a different developer, so that might be still happening. Ah, they Metroid Prime 4 did, I see. Yes. <laughs> British Railways has spread to Australia. Thank you, Ken, for laughing. <laughs> <laughs> now you understand why I didn't say it, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Obsession: Avoiding parasitic worms. 
Reports are coming in from all over the world of an extreme obsession with avoiding parasitic worms. Severe measures being taken to avoid infection. Imagine believing that people are going to go to severe measures to avoid infection. There's, With every three people avoiding it, there's four people licking doorknobs. There's no way. If COVID has taught me anything, it's that every apocalyptic story about humanity banding together is a lie. That's just what they want you to think. COVID isn't even real, my god. I wish we'd get a proper Fable 1 remake. Not allowed. I think my, my, my issue with anyone remaking Fable at this point, the first British one, is Railways <laughs> just another parasite. Scientists tell public not to worry about British Railways. Although unpleasant, it does not appear to cause any symptoms in humans and will be easily cured. Okay, my, my browser's slowing down, so I will be right back. Infected worship British Railways. People infected with British Railways are reporting visions of rapture and a glorious new overlord species. Without a cure, life as we know it will be over. Normal life in UK is beginning to break down due to British Railways. <laughs> Cure research is starting to slow. <laughs> Friggin' Rails. <laughs> UK and Anarchy! UK is the first to fall into Anarchy due to British Railways! No cure research can take place. See, Josh, this is why American trains are better. No, that's not true at all. <laughs> but that's not Amtrak's fault. That's due to a lot of other factors outside of their control. Like the lobbying to not have them? Yeah, like that. See, I don't know much about trains, but I know that. <laughs> Also, apparently some state or something, some some country or state or something like that, I think I pinged you in it, uh, had started making like super ultra cheap train passes and they saved them, like 3 billion worth of CO2 emissions just by encouraging people to use the train. Yeah, yeah, you sent me that. Or I you thought you'd find that interesting. Or you attacked me in it. Yeah, that was, uh, what country was that? Shoot. Uh... I don't remember. I think that might have been the UK. Oh, that was Germany. It was Germany who did it. And Germany does have a very good rail network.
I don't know. I just wish that public transport was more common. Like, I've heard... Sp I've been tempted to move out of the U.S., not even at this point because I think the U.S. is bad. I mean, like, I think the U.S. has a lot of problems, but, like, ignoring all of that. It's just, I have a person who wants to be able to walk everywhere, and the U.S. just isn't walkable. I get that, but, I mean... Like, the U.S. is not perfect, but we have it pretty good here. Yeah, yeah. in some ways. I guess it depends where you want to go. Where do you want to go? <laughs> I don't know, I haven't thought that far. I don't exactly have a passport, so even if I did have a plan of where I wanted oh to go, what is that? Oh god, oh god. If I say that, I'll get cancelled. I'm not saying that. What were you gonna- <laughs> What did you get me now? I don't know what you were gonna say! You did. <laughs> okay. DM me. Okay. I'll... DM me! I'm almost, do I'm almost done with this, with this game. I'll tell you right before I leave, I promise. Okay. I'm back. I'll tell you what I was gonna say. What did I miss? Oh, nothing. Josh apparently thought of a joke that he can't say on stream as well. <laughs> can't say it. I cannot say it. It's not allowed. Twitter will hear. I. <laughs> what the? What is this cover art? What? I don't even know if you can find it, but I want you- No, I'm gonna go find it! Hang on. So, PSO2 was just launched on- on PS4. Uh-huh. Cool. The cover art is terrible. Oh no. At least to me. At least to me. It's really bad because it's just... What is this? And, and I can't find it. I'm really annoyed at this. I don't know if it's the same over in Japan. Is kind Send of I, I don't know. Hmm? Send me the the, the art. I'm I'm trying to. It's um trying to find it because. Oh my God! Come on. Okay. Can I can I look up New Genesis PS4? Okay, irritatingly, this is the best I got. So, we will... Yes. Copy. Text chat. What? Cyberpunk 2077. I know, right? It doesn't even look like it, Why does- why does- what- what is it called? Why does the new Sonic game look more like PSO2 than PSO2? I know! <laughs> like, what is this artwork? It- it look- you know what else it looks like? What? It's like Valorant. 
Yeah, it does kind of get the violent. It just it gives me Tower of Fantasy vibes, actually, a little bit too. Weirdly enough, I'm about to compare it to something from like 2010. It also what? gives me Sanctum 2 vibes. Someone changed their name to British Rail in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> British Railways has mutated and, and developed the suicide symptom without using DNA points. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Logic will not be able to help this. I... There are no healthy people left in the world. The last healthy person on the planet recently became infected with British Railways. British Railways enslaves humanity. The whole world worships British Railways as their god and master. Efforts to cure the plague have ceased, and humanity is entering a dark new future as a slave species. <laughs> All right, stream. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Later, stream. <laughs>